Okay, so let's review. We've got major, you can play two different ways. We've got minor, which is a symmetrical kind of transformation of that. And then I've shown one other, not so great of a minor chord, but kind of an alternative. So I've got a one chord major, one chord minor. So far that's what we've looked at. The major is the blue, so that's this and this. That's what I was playing is this triangle. Minor was orange, so that's this triangle. Root note, fifth, third. So let's let's take a closer look at this. Or listen. Closer listen. The root note is low, third and fifth are high. Let's listen to minor. What did your ears tell you this time? Root note low, third note low. This time the fifth is what's only when it's high, so that's more like this. Root note minor. Now you might be thinking right now, this sounds real close to that tuning. What's all this this fuss about? Well, it's not close. <laughs> it's an illusion if you think it's close. So let me just play up half steps, just to mess your ears up a bit. Here's half steps on a regular keyboard. And on here. Together. Of course, there's an <laughs> extra note in this, so, so yeah, they're not alike at all. So let's just uh, kind of take a look at the adding a, a minor seventh and a major seventh. None of those, none of these numbers really mean anything in this tuning. We're still within this exercise of kind of comparing to the 12 tone tuning. So, here we have a major chord and I'm going to look at my handy chart because it's hard for me to remember yet. I'm going to add a seventh. So we've got the triad and when the seventh is up here. And it's a kind of a, another real wide chord. So, this kind of sounds like a major seventh chord. kind of a wide stretch. Um, what else do we have here? We can play a uh, minor seventh a couple different ways. We can play it up here. So we have a major chord. Just adding right here. Or we can go like this. show you on here. So that this the blue triad again. Du, du, du. Just tried playing this note as a seventh and also this note as the seventh. These are in different octave ranges. Now what's the difference between those two? They're not an octave apart because remember no octaves in this tuning. They're that horrible interval. There's one seventh. <laughs> Flat, flat octave there. Remember this horrible interval I showed you? <laughs> it doesn't really work if you keep going up. Um, you can add a sixth. Play the major chord plus a sixth or a sixth. Here's a 
interval to avoid again, right? So you choose one or the other. You don't play both together. You can choose a sharp sixth or a flat sixth. So we've got major, add the sixth. I don't know, I don't think that one sounds so great. Or this sixth. That sounds better. Again, that's a black note. It sounds like a really nice interval. But it would be nice if that was a white note, so um, that would be a white note if it was in this mode. At this point, I didn't know what mode this was. I had just scooted that one key over so that the chords I'm coming up with would be all white notes. Lo and behold, when I looked at the research, it was one of the two modes I didn't want it to be. It was Dur 2. Dur 2 and Gamma were the only ones that didn't fit with the others in that happy circle of modes. I'm just going to read from the official Bull and Pierce website just to give you an idea, a little more background. <sighs> Basic Bull and Pierce diatonic modes. First diatonic BP modes that Heinz Bullen evaluated and propagated were much influenced by the leading scales of the Western system. Already their names betray that. I think he means portray that. Dur 1, Dur 2, Mol 1, and Mol 2. Dur meaning major, Mol meaning minor in German music. Dur 2 and Mol 2, that later became John Pierce's preferred scale, are actually of high tonal value, but at first Bullen ignored that and rather settled for Mol 1, which he renamed Delta, and for Gamma, an offspring of Dur 1 through the introduction of the lead tone. Remember, lead tone? Later, when tonality aspects became more and more the driving force, Bullen introduced harmonic and lambda. They rivaled Dur 2 and Mol 1 with regard to tonal capability to offer more melodic tension. Lambda is presently the reference scale for the Bolin Pierce system. All diatonic scales mentioned okay, pay attention to this part. All diatonic scales mentioned so far abide by one unwritten law. They consist of two pentachords, each spanning six half tones, separated by another half tone. Elaine Walker ignored this veto by proposing four new modes with unequal pentachords. Spanning six and five half tones, that are consequently separated by a whole tone. Walker's bold act, act of musical disobedience completed one family of possible basic BP modes. So my disobedience um, completed the circle. So now I'm going to read from my Bull and Pierce skill um, actual research paper. There's a paragraph called Modes. Let's see, this was during my listening tests. I had some human subjects. I was forcing them to listen to Bull and Pierce stuff and have them evaluate something. Baloney's crying to get out. Hold on. The opinions regarding their favorite modes were rather noisy as well. Um, there was a lot of noise throughout the whole test because I only had nine subjects. I didn't test like a thousand people. Um, and they were from non-musicians to highly trained technical musicians with perfect pitch, so they were, had all kinds of opinions. And they were from different countries and had different tastes and stuff, but I still extracted some good data out of all these tests. In fact, all nine of the modes were chosen by at least someone's first, second, or third choice. The top two rated modes were in fact lambda modes, and one of the two modes I developed. So at least, at least one of the walker modes sounded good to the test subjects. The lambda mode, I agree, is one of the most diatonic sounding modes with a nice asymmetrical pattern to it and contains all of the pitches needed to construct the two main wide and narrow triads. I took the liberty to go through every single mode and find every possible consonant sounding chord I could. I made a diagram like the one below for each mode. However, I will only show lambda since it seems to be the tonic mode of choice and shows the largest variety of chords. These chords aren't classified yet to my knowledge except for wide and narrow triads. So I think that kind of sealed the deal for me. I'd already kind of decided on lambda and it seemed like most of the research was leaning towards that. One last reason to maybe stick with lambda mode uh, as far as being satisfied that it really should be the, the main mode of choice uh, is because lambda mode keyboard 
looks kind of nice. It's got just four even black keys. Now, if, if we actually um, show the black keys in reference to this DIR2 mode, then this black key would be moved over here. So it'd be like two wide black keys, two narrow black keys. It's not set in stone yet, but uh, and it's partly because of my own doing, so I suppose maybe I could undo it. But I really don't want to, so by golly, I think I'm just going to say this is indeed lambda mode. It's just that I have that one key scooted over for visual purposes because that's the way it works out best on the axis. I think that's the best decision. It's time for a second opinion about a couple things. What do you think, Baloney? Which mode would you pick? So why don't we uh, get back to some more chord progressions and stuff now that I've said a whole lot of big old mouthful about stuff. 